All right, everybody, welcome back to The Road Show, season two, episode seven, week eight. We have, as you can see, I'm all here alone, and we don't have Guy here with me. Big frig up on Guy's behalf. Forgot the laptop when he went home. A lot of people, a lot of professionals wouldn't do that. Very unprofessional by him. But last week, we had a good week. Over 500. I went four and three. He went six and two. Guy's having a great year. But biggest dummy, 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 dummy play of the day. Can't believe he took Pat Mahomes as a under. He didn't take Pat Mahomes as an underdog. I wrote it. You have to ride it every time. You have to be a complete dumb idiot to not ride Pat Mahomes as an underdog. That hit, big hit. Biggest, biggest L of the day was Green Bay minus three. They won, but it was a tough one. They, they could have they covered the spread. But the biggest hit of the day was one issue, George Pickens, anytime touchdown. And we're feeling good. I'm feeling good. And we have, as you can see here, I'm all alone. But I couldn't be all alone. I had to bring someone special on. And we bring on someone who was banned last year. But he's back this year, and I can't wait for what he got for us. Everyone welcome on the old man. Listen, there was no ban, okay? There was no ban. It was a self-imposed exile. They asked me to do the show. I was on a business trip. High-ranking official in my company could not, you know, be lollygagging around. Anyway, guy's gone. As far as I'm concerned, guy's done. He doesn't take his laptop home. He's home for three days. What's he going to do? Just watch Fox News with his uh, conservative mom? I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> maybe but as far as i'm concerned guys Good. He probably, it's the he year complains, of the but i think he likes it oh, he's, he's shooting the shit with her every day about it anyway <laughs> it's the year of the miller now guy's gone i'm coming in and i'm coming in hot and i'm coming for his job now that i'm concerned i'm here it's going to be a no-brainer to stick with me moving forward like roethlisberger mm. maddox brady breads bledsoe and more <laughs> recently justin fields Russell Wilson. So, Ooh. hey, I'm going to come in here, go Listen, like 6-0, and, oh, and it's going to be like, hey, where's the old man? I need his picks. Where's the plus money if, bandit? I'll be here. If you go 6-0, and oh, there's going to be some conversations to be had. Oh, I mean, I'm like that so <laughs> Raven. I saw the future, you know. I, got, I had one of those <laughs> brain blasts. So, we'll, well see. I, I, I love it. We got, we got a tough – tough lines this week Um, we were discussing pre-show a couple double digit um, lines this week a lot of tight lines this week some divisional games some big games some like who's real and who's not real lines and we'll dive right into it our first game of the day we got Philadelphia and Cincinnati Philadelphia is a two and a half point underdog on the road the over under is 47 and a half I apologize for the point six old man we'll let you start here yeah, as we discussed this a little bit earlier today, actually, we were saying just how tight the lines are this week. They are um, really ugly. This isn't really a, a week that you want to be betting everything, especially some of those double-digit favorites. I stay away from anything over, really over seven and a half points. Anything over 10 is just, you know, crazy to me in the NFL. So I'm, those are automatically no bets for me. But I do like this Bengals-Eagles game for one reason. And his first name is Saquon, last name's Barkley. Just think, what do you think his total, like, yards is for the game? Like, how, what would you set it at? I'd say it's like 86 and a half. I was going to say 85 and a half. Yeah, but you know what? It really doesn't matter. His, I bet this every single week because I just knew he was going to have a great year. It's five and one on the year. Saquon's total yards over five and one on the year. I don't see it not going. You know to what six the line is? Again. I don't see it not going to six and one over uh, the bad, bad Bengals defense. Now I have to check the line. Let me see. Checking the line as well. Yeah, check that. Well, I'll keep talking. But anyway, another bet that I like, and it's completely the opposite. It's zero and six this year for the Eagles is first quarter overs for the Eagles. The Eagles have not scored a touchdown in the first quarter this entire year. That's a crazy step. That's going to change on Sunday. Just 
by the roll of averages. I cannot see the Eagles not putting points up in the first quarter. And Joe Burrow is going to – I think that both both teams score on their first drive, that scripted drive. So I think this game starts four, you know, 7-7, seven, seven, 14 points, goes over the total 13.5 for the first quarter. I uh, well, first quarter, first quarter via DK is nine and a half at minus one ten. Okay, wow, that must have changed because it was thirteen and a half. I'm almost positive, so that must have just been a different book that I was looking at. But yeah, if it's nine and a half, absolutely. I think that this is going to be this game could get loose. <laughs> it could definitely get loose. I like the first quarter though instead of the whole game. Vegas is just really good with the whole games that. They're always, they you know, at a point or two. So I don't like to really bet totals. But, uh, yeah, give me the first quarter over. Saquon's over rushing yards. Uh, like I said, I think both teams score in their opening drive. But I don't – as far as who wins this game, I would lean, lean Bengals. But it's tough to fade the, the Eagles. They have just such a good roster. They really just haven't put it together yet. Um, the Bengals do some good stuff on defense, even though they just don't have the guys. Like, they're – they're not bad coach. That coach, what's his name? Lou Anaromo, or I can't even pronounce his name, but they're good on defense. Like from like a mentality standpoint, they just don't have the dudes. Uh, and they since don't have he, the dudes. I, I, I sorry, agree. Brady. So, Sa- <laughs> so, so Saquon's uh, he's uh, on DK. He's eighty plus at minus one twenty, and ninety plus is. 90 plus is at plus 130. So I, I like either of those, but what one do you yeah. want to put on the books? Maybe here? trying to, uh, do they have like an 80, like just a t- straight total, like 84 and a half? I would, I don't mind paying 120 though. I would do 80 plus. 90 yeah, is a 120 lot. is not a bad price. <laughs> 120 is not a bad price. But yeah. I look at this game and I agree with you. The Eagles have not scored a first quarter touchdown all year. I love that nine and a half is so low. The Vegas is disrespecting the Eagles offense in the yeah. first quarter. I think they got A.J. Brown back. I don't know if Devonta Smith is back. Saquon Barkley's playing like he's 23 years old. But you talked about it. Vegas is so good with these over-unders. But I think this game is a 20-20 game early in the fourth quarter. It, like yeah. 20 points, not just 20 to 20. I think it's like 21-20, 24-20, something like that. Yeah. I think it's a high scoring early fourth quarter. 20, both teams got 20 points. Bengals defense, you talked about it. They're not good. They have a good mentality, but they just don't got right. the guys to make the plays. They don't. Eagles yeah. defense secondary is soft. They got two white man at cornerback. I love I it, but but uh, come on. Now. Yeah. And I so know. I'm it's riding not your this over. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm riding this over 47 and a half. I like it. I think AJ Brown's going to have a great game. I think Jamar Chase is going to keep leading the league and receiving all year. He's just putting on a show. But that's what I'm on. I'm on the over 47 and a half. And I, I, I like that ahead. play. I have one more thing to say about this game. And it okay. could, it could either going to be great for your over or it's going to be detrimental to your over. Is this game is going to be like a follow the leader game. So if it starts mm-hmm. as a shootout, it's going to be a shootout. If yep. it if both teams want to control the clock and like play an ugly game, then it could also be that. Like I could see this game being like 10 to 13 in the fourth, but I could also see it being like 31 to 28. Like it's going to be a tale of like it's one, two extremes. It's, it's going to be two other, extremes. Yeah, yeah it's going to be yep. like they're either going to be down to just have like five play drives or just throw the whole kitchen sink, you know. And, defense, and I, I think I think both teams played – they both played the Browns and the Giants prior to playing each other here. So – and they both beat the Browns and Giants pretty, pretty soundly. Yeah. But this is a game where it's like who's for real and who's not. Bengals, this is a big step for them. Eagles, they need to win this game. Um, but – I like this, but yeah, it could be, it's going to be like, I'm going to know after midway through the second quarter, whether this is going to be a shootout or it's going to be a grind fest. Exactly. But hopefully it's, yeah. hopefully it's leaning the other way, but we'll move on to the next game. Big game in the NFC South. We got Atlanta Falcons going to Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Buccaneers lost Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. Yeah. They're down bad. Tampa Bay opens up at plus two and a half at home the over under is 46 i'll kick us off here they got nobody out there nobody they can't run the ball 
box got nobody. Yeah. Bucky Irvin, Rashad White, they can't run the ball. This is a prop play here. Cade Otten, anytime touchdown is plus 170. He's the only weapon they got. They got Jared McMillan. I didn't even know Sterling Shepard was on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers until I looked at fantasy football. But Kate Otten, he's been on the box. He hit a touchdown last week. He's their only weapon they got out there. If they want to stay in this game, they got to be throwing the ball. Kate Otten, anytime touchdown, plus 170. That's what I'm rocking with. I mean, yeah, I could see it. I'm like a, uh, a hater on the anytime TD pro- props, though. Because, like, would you say it is plus 170? Yeah. I don't know. Like, I feel like that should be, like, plus 300. You always just get shitty odds on the, like, anytime TD. But I could definitely see it. I hate this game, to be completely honest with you. I the, None of this will be a best bet for me. The Bucks made a mess of that game, like, three weeks ago uh, on, what was it? It was a primetime game. I can't remember. I think it was Thursday night when uh, Kirk Cousins was swag surfing after the uh, overtime win. Yeah. But... Um, the Bucks made a mess of that game. They sh- they should have won that game. They they really they blew it. They were there were a few questionable calls if I remember correctly. But the Bucks, like you said, they don't have anyone. So I mean, who is going to score that touchdown besides Kate Otten? I don't know how many touchdowns are the Bucks going to score though. That's my next question. Maybe two. I I lean Falcons minus two and a half on the road. Just they're the healthier team. I mean, I don't like the count out Baker Mayfield and Todd Bowles, though. He's a good coach. Um, he's going to have that good defense coach, firing. So I would not – I'm not betting the, either of these plays. I'd lean my Falcons minus two and a half, and I would lean the under. Um, I could see it getting ugly. There's nothing weather-wise. I looked at the weather. It's going to be clear Sunday. But I don't know. I could feel this just like – it was so high scoring last time. That's not – that's kind of the Thursday night BS that you get, though, where it's just like random yeah, high and, games. Um, and the Tampa Bay Bucks aren't the same team on that Thursday night. They don't have any of the weapons no. that they had flying no. around out there. No, they don't. So, yeah, I also I – like, I do like that underplay. I, I would lean the under. It's tough. I would like to get it live, though, if I did. You know, what's it at right now? Uh, 46. 46, yeah. I'd like 49, you know. 28, yeah. 20 caches. I don't know. 46 is even high, though. Maybe I will take that. We'll see. A number. We'll see how the Saturday right. slate goes for me, how much money I yeah, got in the we're gonna have to, We're <laughs> going to have to see how that goes, too. So we'll move on to the next game. How about you kick us off for this one? Good game in the 4 o'clock slate. We got yeah. a lot of games on Sunday. Don't know why they gave us two Monday night games last week whenever we needed it this week. Mm-hmm. But no, I digress. Weeks this week. We got no, which is crazy. We got Buffalo at Seattle. Seattle is a plus dog, two plus dogs at home. Seattle plus three at home. The over under is 46. Yeah. Um, so you might want to get on this before ESPN and everyone starts talking about it and it shoots the line down. This, I looked at the weather on Thursday, I checked it again this morning. It's going to be a shit sami. Shit storm. It's going to be a tidal wave in Seattle. It, and Seattle loves rain. Like, if anywhere loves rain more than Pittsburgh, it's Seattle. And it's rain in there Saturday, Sunday. It said like 95% chance all day. So, I mean, it's going to be nasty. And the Seahawks don't have Metcalf. This is an under game for me. I think that, like, I don't see Amari Cooper, like, just being great you know the first week that he's out there what's he been there for like four dinners like he has not done yeah. he barely knows the offense they're gonna try to get him the ball it's gonna be like what they did with Devontae Adams would he have 30 yards I would mm-hmm. definitely bet the under for this game I could see um Josh Allen making a lot of mistakes especially in the red zone um with the the rain coming down and just the way that he plays football the Bills really haven't looked elite on offense since they lost bad to the um Ravens um on Sunday night like a month ago um they started the year like they put up 30 points so many times and then since then they haven't put up 30 points until they played the blind deaf and dumb Titans last week so I mean crap i like the pit panthers they might be able to put up 30 points against the titans i don't know so i don't know rain and forecast i like the under 
It's tough to fade Allen. That's why I go the under. I also like the Seahawks. Like I could see this seems like a a game the Seahawks could win. But so that's a great transition because yeah. I looked at I got some stats for you for this game. I, I like that underplay. I do lean the under as well. I'm happy to hear that it's piss and rain and a shit yep. tsunami in Seattle this weekend. <laughs> Seattle career is 63, 44, and one as a home dog all time. That's good. Maybe that maybe that's not all time. I don't know. That's only 107 games, but I don't know. I think they've been around longer than that. But that's just a maybe a recent stat. So, and Geno Smith is nine and six career record as a home dog. It's a pretty good record as a home dog. It's a big game for Seattle to keep ahead in the uh, NFC West. I like Seattle plus three in this game yeah, at home. Too. Shit tsunami. They may not win, but. And I hate plus three if they don't win, but want them, this just too. feels like a Seattle game. Like the twelve, the twelfth man's going to be rocking. Give me yeah. Seattle plus three. I may, I may jump on the money line, but th- that's going to depend on the Saturday game. But Seattle plus three is who Actually, I'm rocking with. Yeah, I would want the plus three and a half. Um, yeah, then you'd probably be able to get that live. Like even if the Bills just take the ball first, get a few first downs or something. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, that's going to be an ugly game. And I don't think that the bill, the bills really haven't like proven themselves this year. They haven't win ugly games. I mean, they've beaten bad teams and they've looked bad against good teams. Yeah, exactly. They beat who they should, they're supposed to beat, you know, um, they're kind of lose against the good ones in that regard. So I don't know. I, uh, yeah, no Matt, no Metcalf scary though for the Seahawks. I'd like to have him out there. It is, but. <laughs> it is. But we'll, we'll we'll move into the Sunday night game, our last game of the our last game of the day. I'll kick us off here. We got Sunday night football. Dallas Cowboys coming off a bye week, but an embarrassing showing against the Detroit Lions, going to the falling, falling, falling 49ers. Dallas falling. opens up at plus four, and the over under is forty seven. Man, did I want to take the San Francisco 49ers so bad. Alexa, stop. And I wanted to take them so bad. But then I'm like thinking, I'm like, you know what? I think the Cowboys with McCarthy are pretty damn good off a of bye. I looked it up, 3-1 and one off of buys and 2-1 and one on the road. Man, did the Cowboys look terrible two weeks ago. But coming off a of bye... I don't know. I just, I just got to take the Cowboys plus four. I just have to take them. If this was my, if this was three, I'm taking the San Francisco 49ers. But four, I'm like, why is it four? Four is such a non-football number that I'm taking the underdog here. Give me Dallas Cowboys plus four. Get right game for McCarthy and the Cowboys. I agree with you. I, I hate the Niners. They stink. I mean, stink. let's. Let's just talk about, like, who can't handle adversity? Kyle Shanahan. Kyle Shanahan, it, like, he sucks in tight games. I mean, no one wants to talk about it. Oh, he's the offensive messiah. Oh, he's this offensive guru. Okay. He loses tight games. And how's Brock Purdy going to handle adversity? If there's one thing that the NFL has taught me in the 25 years I've followed it, well, maybe 22, um, Rock bottom is always further. Like, it can always get worse. Yeah. I mean, it. if you think you've hit rock bottom, it can get worse. Remember last year with the Steelers? We thought we hit rock bottom whenever we lost to the Patriots on Sunday night. No. We go out to Indianapolis, blow a 13-0 lead, lose 31-13 the next week. Yeah. It can get worse. It can always get worse in the NFL. And that's what the 49ers are going to find out this week. Brock Purdy doesn't have the the Cowboys with me. I am not rocking with the Cowboys. I'm taking the Niners under total points. uh, It was 22 and a half when I looked last. Uh, But that that might have changed, actually. Yeah, I didn't look on DK. So I don't really care what it is. I want the Niners under. We'll rock with that. We'll we'll rock with that number. I'm ready to throw a pick. Ooh, Purdy INT. I love that. That's minus one ten. So I I wish Marka Parsons was playing, but he's not. Debo and Kittle are both questionable. If Debo doesn't play, 
<laughs> like Brock Purdy's gonna be a deer in fucking headlights, man. What's Excuse gonna happen? Friend. Like Ayuk, Ayuk <laughs> is is gone for the year. Like they don't have anybody. No, they have nobody. And I, I mean, they still have a great offensive line. And as much crap as I just talked on them, like Kyle Shanahan can, like he can put up points. But I just, I don't. I think this is going to be low scoring or the Cowboys just completely annihilate them. There's no way. There's no way I can see the Niners covering four here. The Cowboys no aren't as bad as, as they looked against the Lions. I mean, that game got away from them. The Lions can do that to people. The Lions are the class of the NFC. But no, the, Cow- the Cowboys put up 30 against a really good Pittsburgh Steelers defense. I'm not being biased there. I mean, they're they're not as bad as they looked against the Lions. Yeah. And so I've everyone wants, loves to hate the Cowboys. I don't like them, but I, uh, I think that they'll definitely, in my opinion, be able to keep that Niners number down. I love it. So, so I'm rocking Cowboys. You're on the uh, team total under and Brock Purdy INT. I love the INT play. And we'll move yeah, right I mean, in. We'll move yeah, right into our Irby's best bets. <laughs> Irby's. Irby's best bet. I was just there last night. Great service. Great wings. Just do not ask them to change the TV because they struggle. They just got an iPad and they still struggle to change the TV, TV channel. But we'll let you kick it. us off here. What do you, uh, what's your best bet of the week? Your mortgage bet of the week. Here. I I want to, I will do that in a second. But I it need you needs to note that it's twenty four and a half the the total um, for the Niners. Right. Give, me, give me those two points. Thank I, you. Yep. I don't want to sell myself short. I misremembered. Anyway, my best bet. It's not a game that we talked about. It's a game one p.m. in a town, little town called Miami. Dolphins mm. the Cardinals. The Dolphins are going to kill the Cardinals. Four and a half isn't enough. Tyreek Hill might have a f- 900 yards. I mean, Tua is going to come out and just stunt on these hoes. Okay, you actually, don't like, uh, you, you? You got minus four on DK, so you don't even have play. the hook. minus four. I don't care. I mean, like I said, I think the Dolphins score 30. I mean, Tyreek, Waddle, like all these guys, Mostert, like they've all just been like itching to have someone that isn't, Is you know, competent Alan at quarterback. Yeah, at quarterback. Yeah. So they've got their Tua. Mike McDaniels is going to be out there. He's actually the only guy I'm a little worried about with this. I think he's going to go out there and call a really confident game, but I could also see him, as Tomlin would say, living in his fears um, just with the like past like five weeks of how bad they've looked and trying to like, one keep to a healthy like slide yeah. brother like he better never like go for a first down ever again i ever. mean it's gonna be scary to watch him play though like i will admit i mean i don't yeah. really care that much i'm not like that invested in his life but i mean i don't like you know that it's not like he had some freak injury like this is a like a thing where like you're statistically probable to get more if you've had one so like not like he's like Demar Hamlin or someone who just tore their ACL, you know. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know. Prayers for Tua, but I like the four. <laughs> Give me the four points, at least for this week. They're going to come out hard. And it's at home. I mean, Miami's going to be rocking. They're not really out of it yet. What's the Dolphins' record? They've had their bye four. already. So, yeah, they're two and four. But uh, the AFC East is bad. Like, they could stack wins down the road. You know, we'll see. Yep. But, yeah, give me the Dolphins, minus four. What else you got? Is that it? I do have one plus money alert. A plus money alert. Juicy plus money. The Jets stink. Okay. And this is another rock bottom can always get worse. You wait and you see when the Patriots beat the Jets on Sunday at home. (laughs) I love that. Just wait. Mike Greenfield or Greeny or whatever his name is, he's going to have an aneurysm on the national television next morning. Like Rich Eisen, no Jets fan, he's going to be – it's going to be insane. I mean, they think they can just bring in a 35-year-old receiver with a hamstring issue, a 45-year-old quarterback with that just goes and does psychedelics in a cave for months at a time, and then firing their head coach is just going to magically, like, 
fix things. Fix no, them, yeah, no. The Patriots got called out by their head coach last week for being soft. They're going to come out there and they're going to beat the shit out of the or out of the Jets. I I see this like I could see the Jets losing by two scores. <laughs> like the wrong team's favored by seven. Call me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I did have New England New England money line written down, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna follow that. I may sprinkle that. Um, on oh, you That's sprinkling. a TBD. That's a T- <laughs> TBD Sunday. But my plays, I got two plays. We talked about the double digit lines. Listen, the Denver Broncos should not be favored by eleven points. Not Are against anyone. Not against anyone. I don't care if it's the Carolina Panthers. I'm rocking with Bryce Young. He's back. He stinks. Carolina plus 11. I just have to take that. The Broncos. It's the Broncos. If it was the Falcons, if it was almost anybody else but the Denver Broncos, I'm probably okay with taking the other side. The Broncos? Are you kidding me? Give me Carolina plus 11, and I'm rocking to Monday night. The Steelers, Giants. Disrespectful total here. Yeah, 36 and a half over. Easy. Steelers may hit that themselves. Russ, right. he it looks so good. One issue is going to be out there in prime time yet again. 22s running the ball hard as shit. Over under, over 36 in that game. I don't love the Steelers minus six, but I'm, go, I'm riding this over. I think Steelers are going to r- roll against the Giants. The over-under is disrespectful to Russell Wilson. Give me that over, 36 and a half. I like, I like both of those plays. I, I'm i very weary to trust Bryce Young, though. What's AG, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm terrified. What's AG's roadshow's name? Do you remember? The what Mute. The Mute, yeah. The Mute is taller than Bryce Young. <laughs> AG, you just caught astray. I'm, I'm just saying. It's crazy. He can't like he can't see over the offensive line. No disrespect to the man, but he should have never been a first overall draft pick. That's the Panthers and David Tepper's fault. But hey, man, there's professionals in that Panthers locker room too. Yeah, that's what you have to always remind yourself. And the, a- the Broncos shouldn't be 11 point favorites against anyone. Can they even put up 11 points? I mean, like seriously, like it. They that line tells me that they don't think that that Panthers score 10. If the Panthers score 10, you win. Because yep. the worst it can be is 21-10, in my opinion. That's, like, the worst it could be. I mean, unless mm-hmm. Bryce Young goes out there and throws two pick sixes. Could happen. Which could also happen. Could happen. Then, like, I think you're good. But, yeah, I like those plays. And, yeah, let Russ cook. Hey, Monday let night's going to be cook. Monday night's going to be awesome. But thank you to the uh, to the old man for joining us. You know, he got eight, he got nine plays here, nine and oh, nine and oh, nine and oh. I got six, yep. hoping to go six and oh, big week. I'm feeling good about these plays. Thank you again to the listeners. Let Russ cook, let the old man cook. Maybe he's back next week. Who knows? Take Maybe, it easy, I mean, yeah, he's gone. Guy's gone. <laughs> <laughs>